Hi everyone, it's Naomi Wolf. Uh, it's a wet day out there, so my hair is ridiculous. Um, it's Naomi Wolf with Daily Clout. Uh, thank you so much for joining me, and um, I'm happy to be back. Uh, I appreciate it. Uh, I took two weeks because of some bereavements in my family, but thank you for your support. I'm back. I'm back on the grid, back at work, and either to, eager to be saving democracy with you here at Daily Clout. There we go. Um, so today we're talking about a really important bill, actually a resolution called SJ Res 7. Um, and you probably heard about this because it uh, passed the House um, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, it passed 54 yeses and 46 noes. And it got some press because it basically was Congress saying no to dirty wars, meaning illegal wars, at least in one country, which is in Yemen. So a little bit of background. Um, the United States, of course, fights a lot of wars that Congress doesn't authorize. Um, and some people agree with that, some people don't, but it's a huge part of our military expenditure. In the fiscal year of 2018, um, Trump submitted a budget, President Trump submitted a budget in which military spending was $639 billion. I'm going to say that again, $639 billion. And that is a 10% increase over fiscal year 2017. So up and up and up, right? I mean, more and more and more money. The, the war machine just... Uh, doesn't quit and every year it um, demands more of our tax dollars. So a lot of people have wondered, does this expenditure, which is so vast uh, and benefits so many corporations that um, provide uh, armaments and uh, support for military intervention, does it really reflect America's foreign policy needs, America's defense needs, or has it become a, a kind of monster with a life of its own? So one of the wars we're fighting is in Yemen. And a lot of people don't really know what's going on in Yemen or, or why we're there, um, whose interests we're supporting and in what way that relates to American uh, security. So the war in Yemen is a war in which it's kind of hard to get information to you because um, the United Arab Emirates uh, and Saudi Arabia make it difficult for foreign journalists to travel to Yemen to report on the war. And it's those um, allies of ours with whom we are um, uh, operating in Yemen. Uh, and whether or not you agree that our operating with them usually with aerial bombardment is in American foreign policy interest. The bottom line is that civilians are definitely getting caught in the conflict. Um, there were, for instance, 570,000 people in the city of Hodeid Day, one city, try to think about that number, half over half a million people, like the, the size of San Francisco when I was growing up in the 70s was like, you know, five and then six and then 700,000 people. It's a city full of people who fled their homes due to aerial bombardment in this war. And Oxfam, which is a British uh, global um, charity, says that civ a civilian is killed in Yemen every three hours. Again, think about that. A civilian killed in Yemen every three hours. Imagine if uh, our news headlines said, well, there's aerial bombardment in the United States and a civilian is being killed every three hours. Um, there were 575 people killed in two months in one city, Sana'a alone. So thousands and thousands of deaths, um, children, uh, buses being blown up, um, hunger, uh, and, and vast internal displacement refugees. And again, very little investigative reporting, very little window uh, to the outside world because of the tight control that Saudi Arabia and United Arab Emirates um, keep over the situation. So it's really hard to, to know what's going on. And, and bigger picture, Jeremy Scahill, um, 
reports that this situation is really not unique for the United States. Uh, Scahill calibrated in his book, Dirty Wars, that there are over 600, quote, dirty conflicts worldwide in which American troops are um, engaged in effectively in warfare, but it kind of skirts congressional authorization by calling it something else like joint exercises or skirmishes. Um, and that brings us to the reason for SJ Res 7, which is our constitution. Did the founders mean to have a situation in which the United States was fighting 600 or 300 or 200 dirty wars unauthorized by Congress um, that didn't go through our beautiful three-part system? Well, no, they didn't. They did not intend for this to metastasize in this way, to, to have this kind of mission creep. In fact, the Constitution is very strict about who uh, gets to wage war and how, and, and, and when United States tax money is released for the purposes of, of underwriting warfare. And what does the Constitution say? Well, Article 1, Section 8 of the United States Constitution says Congress shall have the power to declare war. So our beautiful Constitution, it's very terse, <laughs> and that causes a lot of debate, a lot of discussion among um, scholars of the law and also hopefully among citizens in a way that's very clear and in a way it's very unclear. It certainly doesn't say anyone else has the power to declare war, right? It clearly says Congress, like you can put that emphasis on Congress, Congress has the power to declare war. The president doesn't have the power to declare war. When our nation was founded, the president had pretty much no powers at all or very few. Um, it doesn't say that our judiciary has the power to declare war. Uh, it doesn't say that a king or a prime minister has the power to declare war. Uh, the people's representatives sit in Congress according to our system and it is they doing the will of the people accountable to the people alone who have the power to declare war. So from the point of view of Jefferson or Madison or um, you know our, our founding fathers and no doubt the founding mothers who are left out of history, our situation today in which wars get, get fought and paid for with bypassing Congress altogether is very, very unconstitutional and un-American. So let's go to what the resolution says. It was, as I mentioned, already voted on in the Senate, um, but it's been reintroduced for consideration this week. Um, so it there may still be uh, changes, developments with this resolution. And again, a resolution isn't a it isn't exactly a law. It's a statement of a philosophy almost. It's a it's a statement of the sense of the lawmakers. It's a almost a declaration of principles very often. So it's kind of cosmetic, uh, but kind of important because SJ Res, which did pass with some Republican support, passed the Senate, really says, hell no, you know, we are not on board with this situation as the people's representative. So let's read SJ Res 7. It's super short. And it says it's a joint resolution to direct the removal of United States armed forces from hostilities in the Republic of Yemen that have not been authorized by Congress. So it's right there, very clear that Congress is saying, we didn't vote on this. We didn't authorize this war. And there are U.S. armed forces in that country. And it says resolved by the Senate and House of Representatives of the United States of America in Congress assembled, section one, Congress makes the following findings. One, Congress has the sole power to declare war under Article 1, Section 8, Clause 11 of the United States Constitution. And here, you just want to stand up and cheer whoever you are, whatever your political belief system, because heck yeah, that's what we voted these people in for, to say, hold on a minute, we have the power. We the people have the power to declare wars, not you, not anyone else. Two, Congress has not declared war with respect to or provided a specific statutory authorization for the conflict between military forces led by Saudi Arabia. And then it lists who's there, which I didn't even know, including forces from the United Arab Emirates, Bahrain, Kuwait, Egypt, Jordan, Morocco, Senegal, and Sudan, 
the Saudi-led coalition, against the Houthis, also known as Ansar Allah in the Republic of Yemen. So did you know that we were in alliance with a group of military, including Jordan, Morocco, Senegal, Bahrain, the Sudan, Kuwait, and Egypt? I mean, these are allies and kind of allies and kind of not allies. It's not really who we get into bed with as a coalition of the willing, right? It's a lot of dictatorships. It's a lot of tyrannical governments. It's a lot of governments without free press or, uh, or you know, actual democracy. So uh, a headline to you, thanks to Daily Cloud, um, that's who you're fighting with. Uh, okay, since March 2015, members of the United States Armed Forces have been introduced into hostilities between the Saudi-led coalition, that group I just described, and the Houthis, including providing to the Saudi-led coalition aerial targeting assistance, intelligence sharing, and mid-flight aerial refueling. So now you know what the United States military, what our boys and girls, our men and women have been doing over there, helping this UAE group led by Saudi Arabia, including all these other countries that are not usually joining forces with us um, to uh, helping them to, to engage in aerial bombardment of, of cities in Yemen. Um, four, the United States has established a joint combined planning cell with Saudi Arabia in which members of the United States Armed Forces assist in aerial targeting and help to coordinate military and intelligence activities. So there it's confirming, and a lot of these things are usually hidden or behind the scenes or protected by State Department or clearances or you know intelligence, the intelligence community. It's, it's now explaining we're over there to provide intelligence as well as military support to Saudi Arabia in this attack on this group Houthis. Five, in December 2017, Secretary of Defense James M. Mattis stated, quote, we have gone in to be very to be helpful where we can in identifying how you do target analysis and how you make certain you hit the right thing. Uh, you can decide for yourself if that's a good use of our brave men and women in uniform. Six, the conflict between the Saudi-led coalition and the Houthis constitutes within the meaning of section 4A of the War Powers Resolution, either hostilities or a situation where imminent involvement in hostilities is clearly indicated by the circumstances into which United States Armed Forces have been introduced. So it's basically saying, theoretically, we could join this conflict legally. Seven, Section 5C of the War Powers Resolution, which governs war now, states that, quote, at any time that United States Armed Forces are engaged in hostilities outside the territory of the United States, its possessions and territories without a declaration of war or specific statutory authorization, such forces shall be removed by the president if Congress so directs. So I'm going to amend slightly what I said one beat ago. Section 6 doesn't say that conflict is hostilities, therefore it's lawful to go in. I misread that. It says that conflict can be defined as hostilities, in which case under the law, which governs war in the United States, the War Powers Resolution, you have to ask Congress. You can't just do it. You can't just send them in. And without a declaration of war, these armed forces shall be removed by the president if Congress so directs. All right. So it's really remote. This is a this is like when your dad is driving the car and you're a kid and you're misbehaving and dad pulls over and says, it's my car. We're going to turn right around and go back home unless you kids start behaving. It's a it's a restatement of who has the power to send our military to a hostility. Right. And it is Congress. It's saying us. We have the power. Uh, section 8C of the War Powers Resolution defines the introduction of U.S. Armed Forces to include, quote, the assignment of members of such armed forces to command, coordinate, participate in the movement of, or accompany the regular or irregular military forces of any foreign country or government when such military forces are engaged or there exists an imminent threat 
that such forces will become engaged in hostilities, end quote, and activities that the United States is conducting in support of the Saudi-led coalition, including aerial refueling and targeting assistance, fall within this definition. So they're saying, again, what you guys are doing over there, what our men and women in uniform are doing over in Yemen, lawfully falls under the War Powers Resolution law, which is the law that says who can declare war. So you, you can't just scamper over there and help Saudi Arabia drop bombs on civilian targets. You can't do it. Or on military targets. You can't do it without Congress. Nine, Section 1013 of the Department of State Authorization Act, fiscal years 84 and 85, provides that any joint resolution or bill to require the removal of U.S. armed forces engaged in hostilities without a declaration of war or specific specific statutory authorization shall be considered in accordance with the expedited procedures of another act. So it's, it's saying we have the, we have the legal right to say no. And here's the law that says we do 10, no specific statutory authorization for the use of us armed forces with respect to the conflict between the Saudi led coalition and the Houthis in Yemen has been enacted and no provisions of law explicitly authorizes the provision of targeting assistance or mid air refueling services to war planes of Saudi Arabia or the UAE that are engaged in such conflicts. So it's saying, Whoa, stop everything. Hold on a minute. Nobody, no law authorizes what you're doing over there. It is illegal. Section 10 basically says what you're doing over there in helping UAE uh, identify targets and, and refuel in midair, it's illegal. No law governs it. It is unlawful. Section 10 is confirming what Jeremy Scahill and other critics of these wars have said, that it is a dirty war. It's an unconstitutional use of United States armed forces. And I'm saying that loud and clear to all you veterans out there. Our, I married one, right? Our beloved men and women in uniform. You, you don't mess with their lives. You don't put them in danger unlawfully, right? And taxpayer money, you don't spend it unlawfully. So Section 10 is clearly saying it's illegal. No law authorizes this. Moving on to section two, very fast. Removal of United States armed forces from hostilities in the Republic of Yemen that have not been authorized by Congress. So now that they've introduced this, it's like a drumbeat, right? It's like not authorized, not authorized, not authorized. They're saying it again and again. This is a very aggressive resolution. Um, pursuant to section 1013, et cetera, and they spell out the law, Congress hereby directs the president to remove United States armed forces from hostilities in or affecting the Republic of Yemen, except United States armed forces engaged in operations directed at Al Qaeda or associated forces. So there's this carve out, right? Um, by not later than the date that is 30 days after the date of this enactment of this joint resolution, unless we authorize a later date and unless and until a declaration of war or specific authorization for such use of United States armed forces has been enacted for purposes of this resolution in this section, the term hostilities includes in-flight refueling of non-US aircraft conducted missions as part of the ongoing civil war in Yemen. So it's saying, this is not only illegal, but you have to withdraw them. And you have to get started within 30 days. So by the beginning of May, uh, and then there's this little carve out for Al Qaeda, but it's kind of loosely worded or associated forces. So what are those? So I, you know, I think if you like the resolution and you want to bring our men and women home from an undeclared war in Yemen, which nobody I know can explain, right? Um, you would want to tell your representative to shut down that clause in section two about Al Qaeda or associated forces, because that can be used to keep people there forever. So section three, rule of construction regarding continued military operations in cooperation with Israel. Well, this is interesting. In the middle of something that purports to be a withdrawal of US forces from helping our allies, Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates and their group of rather um, diverse uh, fighters assembled in the coalition. Uh, it says nothing in this joint resolution shall be construed to influence or disrupt any military operations and cooperation with Israel, which is a big question mark, which leads one to suspect that 
Israel will keep helping Saudi Arabia. And there's been a lot of um, behind the scenes speculation from people who are knowledgeable that Saudi Arabia and Israel are, are really no longer enemies, except on paper for cosmetic reasons, and that they're cooperating. And this confirms that, in fact, they're cooperating. And even though the U.S. might withdraw pursuant to this resolution, um, it can still help Israel, which is helping the UAE and Saudi Arabia. So that's a gigantic carve out. And it's also kind of a headline for those of us who would like to know what's going on with our tax money, that we're involved in an undeclared war with Israel and the UAE and Saudi Arabia attacking targets in Yemen. Did you know that? Now you do. Section four, rule of construction regarding intelligence sharing. So nothing in this joint resolution may be construed to influence or disrupt any intelligence, counterintelligence, or investigative activities related to threats in or emanating from Yemen, conducted by or in conjunction with the US government, including one, the collection of intelligence, two, the analysis of intelligence, or three, the sharing of intelligence between the US and any coalition partner if the president determines such sharing is appropriate and in the national security interests of the United States. So that's Again, pretty appropriate. It's saying we're going to withdraw the troops with these important carve outs that I've mentioned, but we're going to leave our spies, basically, and our assets. Um, this doesn't affect the intelligence uh, that's already going on. And a lot of people from both sides of the political spectrum would say in such a volatile area, you know, you need to have your intelligence gathering continue. That's not the same as. Um, risking United States men and women in uniform and spending billions of dollars in a war that Congress ne never authorized and in which civilians, so many civilians died. Um, Section five report on risks posed by ceasing Saudi Arabia support operations. So here, this is Congress kind of covering its behind um, by issuing a report. And, and so they can't be accused of doing this kind of without thought or without um, information, not later than 90 days after the date of the enactment of this joint resolution, the president shall submit to Congress a report assessing the risks posed to United States citizens and the civilian population of Saudi Arabia and the risk of regional humanitarian crises if the United States were to cease support operations with respect to the conflict between the Saudi-led coalition and the Houthis in Yemen. So there's going to be a report but what I want you as, um, you know, this, these videos are seen around the world, but they're, they're provided specifically for American voters to act on as voters. What I want you voters to hear is that your tax dollars and the report that is ensuing as a result of this um, resolution and this withdrawal of troops from Yemen, it's going to study the impact of risks posed to the civilian population of Saudi Arabia if we withdraw our American men and women in uniform. I mean, it is it does include risks posed to the US citizens, yes, but I'm gonna say that again, your money is going to go to a report to assess the threat to Saudi Arabian civilians if we stop fighting a Saudi war. Now, I would like Saudi Arabian civilians to be safe. I would like civilians all over the world to be safe. But I might not feel, and, and this is really an issue because one of our biggest videos was the one in which we explained the, the role of, of Israel and Ilhan Omar's comments, you know, the influence of Israel on our elected officials. And I'm Jewish, so, you know, the I can say with impunity that, you know, American citizens from all walks of life, Jewish, Christian, Muslim, you know, the issue is not, is it Israel, but is it a foreign power? So it's the same issue here. And I think I, we're being very even handed. In this resolution, it makes it clear that your money is going to be spent assessing what happens to Saudi Arabian civilians if we stop fighting an undeclared war on behalf of Saudi Arabia. All right. You may want to spend precious U.S. dollars assessing the impact of what happens when Saudi Arabia has to fight its own war to protect its own people. Um, you may not, but this report clearly is a SOP to Saudi Arabia. You know, it's not saying, will the risk to Saudi Arabian civilians have blowback in the United States, right? It's saying, okay, Saudi Arabia, we're going to stop fighting your war, which we're doing illegally. 
Yes, you're our ally, but we'll make sure that there's a study about the impact of this on your citizens. So I don't know about you, but um, I think that if I think there's a reason that bills are so hard to find, because this is one of those things that if you tell your representative voting on this, I don't want to spend taxpayer money assessing the impact of our foreign policy of not fighting a foreign country's war, the impact on a foreign country's population. I want to I want to take care of American priorities first. This is the kind of clause that would not pass the outrage test if it, if it was um, made more public. Um, and section six, almost done, report on increased risk of terrorist attacks to United States armed forces abroad, allies in the continental United States, if Saudi Arabia ceases Yemen-related intelligence sharing with the United States. Not later than 90 days after the date of the enactment of this joint resolution, the president shall submit to Congress a report assessing the increased risk of terrorist attacks on United States armed forces abroad, allies, and to the continental US if the government of Saudi Arabia were to cease Yemen-related intelligence sharing with the United States. Well, this is also a headline because this suggests that if we stop fighting Saudi Arabia's, Saudi Arabia's war in Yemen, we will be punished by Saudi Arabia, our, our ally, and they will stop sharing Yemen-related intelligence with us. In which case, I really, as a citizen, have to ask, what kind of ally is that? Like, we stop fighting your war and, and you, you punish us by withholding intelligence that might protect American lives or American soldiers' lives? That is not, a, that is not an equal relationship. I mean, once again, we see when we look closely at the bills that the United States is engaged in relationships in which we're not in a position of equality, um, and not in a position of mutual respect, but really doing the dictates of of another country, and 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 not being treated by our allies with with mutuality and respect. Um, Section seven, rule of construction regarding no authorization for use of military force. And it's simply saying consistent with section 8A1 of the War Powers Resolution, nothing in this joint resolution may be construed as authorizing the use of military force. So it passed the Senate March 13th. And, um, and it's up uh, in Congress this week uh, for possible additional action. Um, that is SJ Res 7. You can find it if you subscribe to Daily Clout. You'll find it in the bell cam if you become a member. And without the bell cam, you'll see it on YouTube. And we have commentary. Um, Daisy351, hi Daisy, says, right. And she says, definitely not a good use. Uh, and she says, what is the real reason that Yemen keeps getting attacked? And um, <laughs> I think that is a great question, which is honestly, I'm going to just say very transparently, as a reporter, it's hard for me to answer that question because our ally, Saudi Arabia, and our ally, the UAE, as I mentioned earlier, have made it so difficult for news reports to come out of Yemen. Um, so it's my understanding that there, uh, it's a civil war, it's a civil war in Yemen, and Saudi Arabia feels that it threatens Saudi Arabia's security. So more I can't tell you without further research, which I will do and post on the blog. Um, but I think it's kind of illustrative and important that I'm an American citizen. My taxpayer money has gone to the civil war, right, in which we're fighting alongside Israel and Saudi Arabia. And I really didn't know that in this kind of detail till I researched the bill. Um, and I also want to ask you, you know, if you think that for a democracy like the United States, we should be fighting wars that are so transparent, so not transparent. We should be going along with a situation in which our non-democratic allies UAE and Saudi Arabia are making it virtually impossible for reporters to cover Yemen. I mean, I remember I actually once wanted to go find out what was going on in Yemen when I was uh, in reporting on on um, on Guantanamo, and I was told don't even bother going because it's so dangerous for reporters. It's made dangerous for reporters uh, by by the 
the people in power, including um, including our allies. All right, Barry Atkinson says, stop fighting Saudi Arabia's bar fights. If they pick fights, they should expect to get hit back, not our fight. Uh, Barry, thanks for tuning in. I'm so glad to have you all. I, you know, I'm supposed to be nonpartisan, but I think across the political spectrum, we can agree that it's up to the United States, the people of the United States to decide what is our fight. Is this our fight? A civil war in Yemen. No one has articulated. There's never been a press conference saying, look, everyone, here's why our people have to be in Yemen. Here's why your daughters and sons who enlisted have to fly over Yemen to help Saudi Arabia, a brutal dictatorship, right, that executes journalists, and to help the UAE, another brutal dictatorship, right, where women in neither country have any rights at all, right? We have to help them fuel in midair. We have to help them identify targets to bomb. And meanwhile, half a million people have fled their, their homes because of aerial bombardment, which no one can explain. The reason we're there to the American people, that's why Congress didn't already authorize the war, right? If the American people were behind it, we'd be saying like we did after 9-11, to our congressmen, go fight that war. It turned out to have been the wrong war. But, you know, when when our representatives feel like they can explain the conflict to the American people, they do so. And it's it's notable that no one held that press conference saying this is why we're in Yemen. Um, and Daisy says, oh, she has to go back to work with our troops. Keep up the great work. Thank you, Daisy. All right. So if anyone else has any questions or comments about SJ Res. I think it's really important. I think um, it's it's important because it it's our representatives because of us, us pressuring them and paying attention, saying, wait a minute, we didn't authorize that war. We're not going to pay for that war. Our constituents aren't behind that war. And anyway, even if we were behind it, even if they were behind it, it didn't go through us. So it's unconstitutional. Uh, and Barry Atkinson said, examine investments for politicians. That's a very good suggestion, Barry. And in fact, when you do look at some of these um, hotspots like the Golan Heights, you do see that our politicians have have invested um, or are related to activity uh, in in those areas. In fact, Rupert Murdoch, Tony Blair, and Dick Cheney are all invested. I kid you not; it's confirmed in um, Genie Energy, which is out of the Golan Heights. And you remember that our president just impulsively declared the Golan Heights an Israeli possession. It's actually part of Lebanon. Um, I'm sorry, it's part of Syria. Oof, that was a gaffe. Uh, and it's it's never been, you know, the 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 jurisdiction, the 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 ownership of, of the Golan Heights has never been transferred to Israel, but the president of the United States said he felt that it was it belonged to Israel, and that was a giant economic favor he did to Dick Cheney, to Tony Blair, and to Rupert Murdoch. Um, and so I'm sure with uh, more reporting, we would find economic motivators there. They're usually there with, um, with wars, uh, especially undeclared wars. Um, and, you know, the, the phrase follow the money is something Smedley Butler always said, the great uh, kind of whistleblower of military intervention around the world American colonialism. He was a military guy and he always said, when you look for conflicts, American colonial conflicts around the world, you're going to find um, economic interests that that are driving it. So I'll, I'll, I'll dig deeper with your support and let you know more about why we were in, in Yemen. But the, the short answer is Saudi Arabia and the UAE um, are very powerful allies of ours. They do control oil and they, until we transition to a renewables economy, um, they can make or break the US economy by the price they put on oil, the access they give to oil. So uh, we are not in a, a very strong position in relation to those allies, or sorry, those allies. Um, and they wanted our help fighting their civil war minimally. Nolan Griffin said, um, hey, Naomi, have you looked into setting up the YouTube live stream pre-announcement? If not, please do. I always wind up sleeping in through your videos. So I would be happy to know when. That's so sweet, Nolan Griffin. Thank you. And I will look into it. Our team will. Um, and thank you for the feedback. We are here trying hard every week to make Daily Cloud 
better serve your needs, more responsive, um, to take your recommendations about what bills you think we should cover, uh, and definitely to use YouTube, which now we're YouTube partners. Thank you. You did that for us. You got us over that thousand subscriber mark, and we've had almost 40,000 video views. So now we're monetizing very little bits of money on, on YouTube, but we definitely want to scale up and scale up, and, and we depend on you and your great feedback, Nolan. So thank you. We we will set up a, a, a pre-announcement in time for you to not sleep in through the videos. My bad. Um, Jeff Bertolotti said, post-World War II economics are going to be extremely difficult to sidestep. Jeff, I would love to know more about what you mean by that, uh, if you mean the petrodollar and the way fossil fuels drive foreign policy. I, I do think I understand you, but if you mean more than that, please inform me and keep me posted. I'll, I'll hang around in the, uh, in the comments section after we're done here and we can tune in and pick up again um, next week and, and have a little discussion about what you mean by that. It's such an intriguing thought. Um, all right, so if there are no more comments, I just wanna share what we need. We need, I need to ask you, Please become subscribers of our YouTube channel, but please become Daily Clap members because this mission of reading the bill, explaining the bill, and then embedding the bill with the actual bill cam of the bill so that you can send it through social media and um, show everyone what this resolution is, what it means, tweet the bill sponsor, and tweet your rep. That is expensive for us to produce and provide to you. It's $500 a month for hosting, $500 a month for data, not to mention, we try to pay our graphic designer, we try to pay our videographer, we try to pay, um, you know, everybody who does work for us, even small amounts. So your becoming members really, really, really helps. We need um, 200 members to be self-sufficient. Uh, so, so please click over to Daily Cloud, become a member. It's $3.99 a month. As one of our members said, that's a small price to pay to save democracy. And it's true. You can also go to our Patreon page and make a one-time donation. Like we had a wonderful one-time donation last week of $200. Um, but whatever it is, $5, $10, $50, I've gotten over my shyness. I'm, I'm proud now to say, you know what, you, you, you have your, your, your things that you support, your, your special treats you give yourself. Consider us one of your special treats. Um, you feel better after you listen to a Daily Cloud video and then take action on the Bill Cam. And we've had so many successes now of our community members using Bill Cam and the videos to change a bill, to change outcomes, to, to drive results they want. So you're not powerless. And um, we support you in getting there. Language in the Constitution, I read it, uh, Manuel Persinger, Persinger at the start of this video, um, but I can direct you to it. It's uh, Congress shall have power to declare war, Article 1, Section 8 of the United States Constitution. And Barry Atkinson says, thank you for keeping us informed. Barry, thank you for being such a wonderful community member. Thanks to all of you. And really, I could stay here all day with you, but I should get ready and answer your questions from this over on Daily Clout and also get ready for the next um, bill reading, which is the Violence Against Women Act, which passed last week. Um, it's been in, in the making for a long time and been people have been advocating for it for a long time. So that's a big one. And um, again, I'm going to sign off, but please comment in the, in the comment section, but become members of Daily Cloud, support us on Patreon, and um, we can always uh, get more and more powerful in reading the Constitution, reading the bills, sharing them, and really uh, driving our own democracy. This is Naomi Wolf with Daily Cloud, and this was S. J7, taking our troops out of, S, I'm sorry, SJ Res 7, taking our troops out of Yemen and saying it's Congress that declares war, no one else. Thanks so much. See you next time.